Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we have the great pleasure of meeting with Natalie Gelman. She's a singer and songwriter and a terrific artist. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. Tell us a little bit about your training, uh, because earlier you said you were training in Salzburg. You were studying opera. I did. I studied opera in Salzburg in college. I was studying to be an opera singer and learning classical voice. At the same time, I was starting to write music as well and learning guitar and being a songwriter myself, not writing classical music, but writing pop and folk and country kind of music. Did you um, experience any hardships as, a, as, a, as you were growing up? I did. I Parents that were just not really present for my, um, to raise me, they had, you know, either because they couldn't be or because they were just kind of done being parents <laughs> by the time I was born. But I was lucky to find parental figures in other people in my life. Um, and I think that that's a major factor in going through not having a support system in your parents, but finding it in other people and that inspiration and hope and, and that perseverance and tenacity because you know that someone cares about you and has your back and holds you to something maybe higher than your own folks. You can affect, you can change how quickly you do get back up, how good you are at problem solving and looking for solutions and realizing, oh, actually I didn't fail. This is just one way that doesn't work. <laughs> what about the, on the professional side? Uh, who inspired you and who believed in you and who saw your talent so you could develop on the professional side better? I still have a voice teacher that I really love and um, I've taken lessons with now for 15 years or so. So she knows me inside and out, <laughs> especially when you're talented, people will tell you that you're talented and you, you don't necessarily always know who to trust. And one of the things I really value about her, her name's Caroline. One of the things I really value about Caroline is she, she'll tell me the truth and I know I can believe her. And if she tells me something is good, I believe her. So I'm lucky that I have someone working with me on that kind of level. And then professionally, I really trust my intuition with people and have been lucky enough to meet different people, even back when I was busking in the subways, just different people from playing shows and other artists who have gone through similar things to me. I feel like those have been my best bouncing boards is other artists who are maybe a few steps ahead of me or have gone through something that I hope to go through, whether that's you know, working with uh, labels or touring certain regions. And I get to ask them questions about how did you tour over there? What was that like being signed to a huge label and then being dropped or going on that TV show and being humiliated in front of an, you know, so you get to kind of learn through your friends. Let's um, talk about your songwriting um, process. Uh, how does that work? Songwriting is so interesting because there's never one path when you're writing a song um sometimes i'll start and i'll have everything come at once with the, the chord not the chords but everything will come at once in terms of the the lyric and the melody and the idea of what i'm trying to do and what i'm eventually the goal is to say with the song and other times it's like crafting you know fine chiseling away at just this stump to make some carved wood thing where i'm like okay what is it that you want to be is it about this or is it about that or um and if it is about what i want it to what if i'm trying to say this am i actually saying that with the lyrics and so sometimes it's really nice when you have sounding boards in other artists or you're even writing with someone else because they can you know, help reflect back to you. Hey, um, I know you thought you were singing that and you thought this song was clear, but that's not what I was getting. But yeah, songwriting for me sometimes is therapy. Sometimes it's just fun. And um, I use songwriting in so many different ways to, to process um, things that have hurt my feelings and have been hard to go through um, to things that I'm happy about and you know finding a way to immortalize a moment 
in a song. <laughs> Everybody is born with an instrument and we need to learn how to play it. And so many people die with their music still unplayed. I think music fires, and I don't know the right terminology for it, but it fires in more parts of our brain, gets our dopamine going, gets everything calmer or, or whatever, or turned on and, and fired up. What people need to do as well is, is go on a journey and just and listen first to what they like and think, why do I like this? What is in the song that is selling to me? Is, is it the music that I like? Is it the melody? Or is it the beats? Or is it the lyrics? And then that can help you find, you know, more songs that fit the bill for what you're wanting that music for. If it's, you know, to inspire you to run or and do a marathon or, you know, whatever you're doing. How did the street lamp musician emerge? Uh, what were you thinking of or feeling when... Uh, so, street lamp musician, I was walking home from work. I had um, graduated college and started working at Starbucks and started working as an assistant in a makeup shop and then was also busking every night. I was working three different jobs for you know, all intents and purposes. And the one I really cared about was busking in the subways at night. And at the same time, it felt like I wasn't always getting where I wanted to go. Um, sometimes I would um, feel like people really weren't listening. And I was thinking about that and how to, how to, you know, do more of what I loved and do better. And so I saw someone buying flowers at this uh, kind of bodega on Hudson and Bleecker. And she was wearing all black and she was smoking a cigarette and she was looking at the flowers. And at that particular store, the flowers are very expensive because it's right on the edge of Greenwich Village. And I was watching her as I was walking past her and she just seemed like she couldn't care less about spending $20 for, you know, six, you know, tulips <laughs> or whatever it was. And to me, that was such a extravagant purchase. And I started writing the song and I was just walking home and, and um, that's where the first few lines were born and just kind of fell and fell in place after that little by little. Um, so that all was written within 20 minutes by the time I got home sat down with the guitar that was all done with from from seeing that woman to finishing that chorus flowers and cigarettes and and bleaker jet black and jet set to It's like the harder I pull my foot to the pavement, less of me won't seem to hear. On your won't you listen to a street left musician singing a heart out for you tonight? Sorrow, the hope for tomorrow. Everything is gonna be alright. Sneakers and high heels. I watch them walk by with me on the streets that have been mine, but I don't know anymore. Shops trying to change it. Faster than the seasons, people try, but it's just easier to ignore. Oh, New York, won't you listen to a street left musician singing a heart out for you tonight? Singing a sorrow with a hope for tomorrow. Everything is 
gonna be alright And I don't wanna die Sorrow with a hope for 